Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's time for one of my favourite videos of the month. It's the Indie Author Showcase, and I've got some great authors coming up today to talk about their books. If you're a self-published author of fantasy or science fiction, and you want to be included in a future one of these showcase videos, drop me a line on Instagram, Twitter, Discord, email. You can find my email address on the About section of my channel here on YouTube. Give me the details of your book, and I'll give you details on how you can get involved. Now let's go and have a look at today's guests. Hi, uh, this is this week's episode of Introverts Standing Awkwardly in Front of Their Bookcases. Uh, I'm Dave Dobson. I write fantasy, sci-fi, and thrillers. Uh, the series I'd like to share with you today is uh, the Inquisitor's Guild series. This is the first book, Flames Over Frosthelm. Uh, this series involves the Inquisitor's Guild, which is a branch of law enforcement in the uh, medieval-ish city of Frosthelm. Uh, and the Inquisitors, or the Inspectors of that Inquisitors Guild, go around trying to solve mysteries. In Flames Over Frosthelm, there are two of them. Uh, they're fresh out of their apprenticeship and training. Uh, the Inquisitors Guild runs a small school. Uh, and Martin, who's small and bookish, and Boog, who's large and muscular and likes to thump things, are out on their first case, uh, which involves a jewel thief. Uh, so it seems pretty simple, but then that thief explodes. Uh, and all manner of things start to happen, and they get embroiled in uh, something that goes back actually centuries. So, uh, a lot of fun. The books are meant to be uh, sort of crossover between fantasy and mystery, and then also a lot of humor. Uh, they've been described as uh, CSI meets Princess Bride. That's the, the vibe I was going for. Uh, so I hope you'll have a look at them and give them a try. There are four of them now so far. Flames Over Frost, Home, Outcast Crown, Woeling Lass are all novel length. Traders Unseen is actually available free from Smashwords and Kobo, so you can give it a try there. That's novella length, uh, a little more fast-paced, shorter uh, story. Um, I also write some sci-fi. I've got Daros, which did pretty well in the SPSFC last year, uh, kind of a space opera adventure. And I've got another space opera coming and a thriller out to Got Trouble. So I would love to share all of these with you. You can check out my site, uh, davedobsonbooks.com. I've got a newsletter there, uh, and all the books are available on Amazon. Most of them are in Kindle Unlimited. I hope you'll give them a look. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks to Dom for providing this opportunity, and I'll see you around. Hi, it's Lauren. I'm an indie fantasy author, and you might know me as L.L. McRae. Um, thank you once again, Dom, for the opportunity to take part in another indie author showcase. Uh, I think this is my third one now, so I really, really appreciate the support that you give, not just to me, but to all indie authors. Um, and I'm here today to talk about an upcoming release. Um, very, very excited about this one. I've had a lot of people asking me for news about this. Um, for the last sort of year, year and a half, I've really struggled to write, so this is bit of a mammoth achievement for me and one I'm really excited to share with you guys. Um, and I'm talking about The Shadowgate. Um, it is book two in my Dragon Spirit series. Um, it's the sequel to The Iron Crown, which is up here. Um, and it's adult, multi-POV, epic fantasy. There are dragons, there are spirits, there's curses, magic, adventure quests, all that fun stuff. So without going too much into kind of spoilery territory, um, book two really expands on the world that we are introduced to in book one. Um, we dive deeper into the characters that we've met. We're also introduced to some new characters. Uh, we're also introduced to some new dragons as well. There are nine named dragons that we get to meet in book two, which is very, very exciting. They're all very different, different spirits from different domains, and I can't wait for you to meet them. Um, book two is in some ways a little bit darker than book one. I still tend to write quite light-hearted, fun adventure fantasy that's, you know, nice to escape, a, a nice escape read. Um, but things have to get worse before they can get better, um, and things get uh, quite bad in book two. Um, there are a lot of consequences, there are a lot of characters making decisions, conflicting loyalties which drive some of these decisions, desperation, panic, and corruption. That's kind of the theme of book two. Um, so if you like your epic fantasies, vast and sprawling, kind of flavoured by Final Fantasy in terms of a ragtag group of characters thrown in together, uh, morally grey characters, um, characters that kind of 
interlink in different ways or their paths cross in different ways, uh, you're probably going to enjoy this series. If you liked book one, I am fairly certain you'll like book two as well, potentially even more. Um, and if you're on the fence about book one, then maybe this one will show you a bit more about what the series is about and what my writing is about. Um, I can announce that the release date is Friday the 28th of April, and I really hope you give it a try and see if you like it. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks, Dom. I am JCM Byrne, and this is Wistful Ascending. This is my book, which takes place in a world where beings with fantastic magical powers fly alongside artificial intelligent spaceships, facing down an empire that spans half a galaxy and thousands of races. And if you're thinking, that doesn't sound like a lot of other books that I've read, it's not but you may have seen some similar settings in little-known franchises like Star Wars and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so it won't be too unfamiliar. Now, this book follows our main character, which is why he's on the cover, Rohan. Makes sense, right? Rohan is a half-human, uh, living, breathing weapon of mass destruction, and after spending 10 years fighting for that aforementioned empire, um, uh, mass destructing all across the galaxy. He's done. He's had enough. He's tired. He has retired to a sentient space station and all he wants is a normal everyday life. He wants a nine to five job. He wants a place where he can get a decent cup of coffee and some good eggs. He maybe wants a chance to date a little, have some romance. And that's exactly what happens. No, wait. No, I'm sorry. That's Legends and Lattes. That's a different book. That's not what happens. Instead, in his system where he lives, a wormhole opens up and a ship full of refugees comes through. Not a big problem, but complications ensue from there. Uh, the refugees are wondering, hey, there's this lovely uh, Earth-like planet above your space station. Why doesn't anyone live on it? Turns out, there's a pretty good reason. And they find out the hard way because that's what happens. Um, there are uh, 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 people from the Empire come and say, hey, this wormhole hasn't opened in 10,000 years and now it does. That's interesting. Can we open another one? What about these other wormholes? Do we have a situation we have to address here? And Rohan has to quickly come to terms with the fact that if he wants to protect the things he loves and the place where he lives, he may have to go back to a little bit of mass destructing again. I know that's not a word. I'm sorry. I like it. Um, so there's a lot of uh, things going on in this book. Um, do I pull it off? Is it good? I don't know. I'm not a reviewer. I'm an author. So if you're at all interested in, oh, guys fighting giant monsters, uh, spaceships, uh, people flying around uh, with capes on. Actually, I don't think there are any capes in this book, but you get the idea. Um, look at some of the reviews, because other people have done this work and they've reviewed the book. You know, go to Goodreads. I have like 149 ratings, uh, over a 4.5 average. Uh, a lot of written reviews, a lot of written reviews on Amazon, 4.7 average on Amazon. I like numbers. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a science guy. Um, uh, check out, uh, uh, go, go to uh, Google and search for the title and you'll find about a dozen different bloggers have published reviews, some very fl flattering uh, of this book, and you'll get a sense for whether you like it or not. And <clears throat> I won't tell Dom, but you can even search for Wistful Sending on YouTube and find about a dozen booktubers who have also reviewed the book. And if those reviews entice you, which I hope they will, and you pick it up and enjoy it, I have good news. There's more. Return of the Griffin, the sequel, and you'll understand who the Griffin is later after you read the first book. And there's our guy Rohan again. Yep. And that's behind him, a giant shark. Because sharks are cool. And then, if you like that one, there's a third blood reunion. Same guy, except this time, his shirt's all torn off. You want to know how has that happened? What happened to his shirt? Got to read the book. You can find out. So I hope you'll do that. I'm JCM Byrne. You can find all of these books uh, on Amazon. Uh, they're all available on Kindle Unlimited. Wistful Ascending is on Audible as well. You can also check out my YouTube channel where I talk about all kinds of stuff. And don't worry, it's not cheating on Dom because I don't review books. I hope you take a few minutes and check these out. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Jonathan Neves Mayers, and I'm the author of Revin Song. It's my first novel, and I initially wrote it just for my wife. 
But then I realised as I was writing it that some other people might be interested in reading it. So I decided to self-publish it. It's a dystopian fantasy novel about a bunch of winged creatures from the sky who invade a world and destroy most of humanity. The surviving humans live in underwater structures called cocoons and the story focuses on one of these people who discovers she has abilities similar to the creatures. When she escapes from her cocoon and goes up to the surface, she discovers that things aren't completely black and white when it comes to the invasion. Esme Rosalyn, who you might know is a big supporter of indie books, provided a great description of the sorts of things to expect. A fast paced sci fantasy with compelling characters, alien invasion, culture clashes, other worlds, found family, pulse pounding action, brutal betrayals, mental health exploration, queer love and lots of emotional gut punches. I think that sums it up perfectly. It's out now on Amazon um, since the 7th of February on ebook, paperback and Kindle Unlimited. And it's the first in a four book series, which I've got pretty much entirely outlined and I'm already working on the second. Thank you so much for listening and thank you very much to Dom for having me on his channel. Bye. Hey everybody, I'm Mark Raines. I'm here to tell you about my Galactic Civilization series. Book one is my debut novel, Felon's Rescue. It was released late last year. I view it as a combination of Ian e M. Banks's Player of Games and Matter, but with a more Scalzian feel. Uh, it deals with one space colony interfering with a medieval civilization as a game, sort of like the video game Civilization come to life. I don't want to spoil too many plot details, but my idea for my Galactic Civilization series is that it's both inspired by Galactic Civil Empire type stories, but it's also an anti-Galactic Empire version of it. And what I mean by that is at the center of it is a galaxy-spanning civilization, a galaxy-spanning governing body, but that governing body isn't oppressive. It isn't run by one man or one group. It's representing the varied interests of all the galactic civilizations, and it has limits on what it can do and where it can get power from. Uh, Felon's Rescue is smaller in focus. It kind of starts the reader in a narrow aspect. It centers around one planet um, on one colony, but through it, we learn about the galactic civilizations and the galaxy they all inhabit. It's character focused and the antagonists aren't meant to be bad in the traditional sense. I love a good bad. I love Lord Sauron. I love Darth Vader. But in the stories I'm telling, I want to tell talk about uh, bad guys, antagonists that aren't necessarily evil or immoral. In fact, in a perfect world, my reader might consider whether the protagonist is wrong and the antagonist can be right, at least in some respects. Uh, my favorite scenes to write in Felon's Rescue deal with the protagonist confronting or being confronted by the antagonist in some way. Um, and that trend continues with the sequel to Felon's Rescue. So Felon's Rescue, uh, my debut novel, is the first book in the series. The second book in the series is The Descendants of Prontoth. It's just recently out this year. And this story deals with uh, the government from the most oppressive of the galactic civilizations um, trying to track down and destroy the descendants of Prontoth, who are ostensibly the heroes of my series. Um, and in this story, I make the antagonist kind of the center of the story. Uh, he gets a, He's a point of view character, and he gets the most time on the page of anybody. I view him as kind of a pol politician version of Grand Admiral Thrawn from the Star Wars EU, if you're familiar with that. Um, he's definitely been my favorite character to write throughout the series. Uh, he's high up in that very oppressive government, uh, but he's also a reformer, and it's that paradox, I think, that will draw the reader to him. It's, it's that I like him and make him such an interesting character. I want the reader to like him as much as I do, and I hope you do. Um, the other fun thing about The Descendants of Prontoth is I really get to play with story structure. It's something I love to do. I know Banks did it amazingly in use of weapons. Uh, so it's a, I get a unique story structure in the way I tell it. I think it works really well, and I hope you enjoy it too. So both Felon's Rescue and The Descendants of Prontoth are available on Amazon. Uh, just go ahead, look for them today. And if you want to know more, check out my website, markwrains.com. You can sign up for my mailing list. I give away prizes. Uh, off some audiobooks I've given away. You can also sign up for the free sh three short stories. So thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy my books. Hey.
Hey friends, it's Tori from the channel Tori Talks. I am also a fantasy author. Dom, thank you so much for the opportunity to share my book with you guys. So I am the author of Phased, which is a dark YA supernatural and urban fantasy about two sisters named Val and Lila Blackwood. Val and Lila are werewolves, and according to the organization that oversees the assimilation of, of werewolves into human culture, they are the most dangerous kind of werewolves because they are true bloods. This book deals with a lot of very heavy themes. It is YA in genre, but it is definitely very heavy on themes of mental illness, of healing and trauma and all of those things. Val and Lila were captured at a very young age and the organization basically treated them like lab rats. And now they have the opportunity to prove their control and their ability to behave essentially, in human culture at a assimilation school. If you enjoy Motley Crue, found family, strong sisterhood themes, uh, anti-magic school environment, with a very heavy side helping of coping mechanisms and trauma and healing and the search for identity and belonging, um, this book is definitely for you. This book is incredibly fast-paced and incredibly character-driven, so if you like both of those things and you also like to have very strong, dark themes in the books that you read, Phased is the book for you. If you're ready to jump into Val and Lila's story, you can find it on Amazon in both paperback and ebook. I hope that if you pick Phased up, you find as much to love in reading it as I did in writing it. Hi everybody, my name is Martin. I'm one half of Bradley Lejeune, the author team behind the McMurdo Rift series. The first book starts on the last day of Earth's Civil War, where Mark Franklin, a fighter pilot, is fighting one last battle. He saves the world at a terrible price. Years later, he lives a peaceful life running a bar on an aging starliner in the back of the beyond, but his peace is about to be shattered. Can he help his ex-wife find her missing husband? And what are the mysterious aliens known as the Karoo after in the heart of the McMurdo Rift? The first book launched last year. The second book, The McMurdo Triangle, launched in January. And the third book, The McMurdo War, is due out later this year. If you enjoy epic space opera by authors such as Andy Weir, James S.A. Corey, and John Scalzi, check out the McMurdo Rift series on Amazon and Kindle Unlimited. Thank you so much to all of the authors who've come along to share their books today. I hope everyone watching has picked out some nice recommendations to go and look at a little bit further. I'll leave, as usual, all the links down below so you can check out the web pages for these authors and also a Goodreads link so you can check out either the book or the first book in the appropriate series as applicable. I'll hopefully catch you in the next video sometime soon, but until then, as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books. Bye for now.